Perhaps you're with us Whose holidays are the era Pull up a deck chair and sit back, relax. It's time for your favorite cruise hour. You're on board, just cruising. Whether you're dreaming of your first cruise or planning your next one, join Larry Jackson as he explores the magical world of cruising. To launch today's cruise, here's Larry Jackson. Aloha. Hey, como mai, and welcome to Just Cruising. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Larry Jackson. I'm the owner of Cruise Holidays of the Era. I'm a Cruise Line International Association designated Elite Cruise Counselor. I'm also a Hawaii Visitors Bureau designated Hawaiian Destination Expert. But most importantly, I'll be your cruise director for this week's edition of our YouTube magazine that we call Just Cruising. And I'm so glad you could be with us today. We've got a great show planned for you. We're going to start off with the news of the week from travel uh, things that came across the computer monitor that inter that interested me. Uh, then we're going to talk about Viking Ocean Cruises' new ship and five things that you should know about uh, Viking's Ocean Cruise ships that are unique. Then we'll talk about what's going to be happening with the world of river cruising in 2018, the new launches and the things that are going to be changing as far as river cruising is concerned all over the world. Then we're going to discuss the Royal Caribbean's beverage card, beverage package, so that uh, it's it's very indicative of all the other cruise lines beverage, pack, beverage packages and some questions that you, we're going to try to answer some questions that you might have about beverage packages. And finally, if we have time, I'm going to give you some tips about tipping. All right, so please uh, stay tuned and here we go. Let's start with the news of the week. Uh, this uh, headline caught my attention. It says the U.S. softens Cuba travel advisory. Now, you might recall back in September, we had a, um, an incident where we evacuated all of the non-essential embassy and State Department people from Havana, Cuba, and our newly opened embassy there. And the reason was that they were uh, allegedly, no, they were, uh, suffering from things like hearing loss, dizziness, headaches, fatigue, cognitive issues, visual problems, and difficulty in sleeping. The theory is that someone had use electromagnetic pulses uh, against our embassy to make our folks ill. And so the State Department issued a travel warning telling people in the United States, U.S. citizens, not to travel to Havana, Cuba. Uh, I was in Havana, Cuba on Thanksgiving Day of this year. That's following the September warning. Trust me, there were no issues whatsoever. I came back perfectly healthy uh, with no fatigue, dizziness, or hearing loss. But, uh, and I have to tell you, personally, I am not a fan of the State Department travel warnings because most of the time they're issued after the fact uh, for things that have already occurred and, um, and I, they're just overdone. And so I, do, I really don't pay much attention to them. But I just thought I'd bring this to your attention because it does make the news and a lot of people say, oh, now we can't go to Cuba because there's a warning. Well, they downgraded it from a, uh, what was the level before... They now have level three and four advisories. They downgraded from a four, which is do not travel, to a level three, which is urges citizens to reconsider travel. Um, and level four implies life-threatening risk. Now, there are things for level four, such as uh, going to the Bahamas because of the Zika virus, which we also have here in Florida. So these, these warnings are not very helpful. I just wanted to bring it to your attention uh, one of the things that the State Department recommends is void, voiding the Hotel National and the Hotel Capri. Okay, that's where some of our em embassy employees were living when this, uh, these things occurred. Uh, they also say know where to seek medical treatment uh, in Cuba. I don't know how you could possibly know that, but if you're cruising to Cuba, uh, you do have uh, a medical infirmary on board almost all of your ships. So uh, we are going to Cuba. We are cruising to Cuba. The restrictions that we have on people-to-people -people exchanges are all being met by the excursions that you can take while you're on board a cruise in Cuba. Um, we have all, almost all of our cruise lines are going there right now. The two biggest are Royal Caribbean and Norwegian cruise lines that are doing four-day cruises to Cuba. Uh, we also have some seven-day cruises which go to the other two ports uh, as well as Havana. We were there, as I said, at Thanksgiving. We had a wonderful time. I would go again in a heartbeat. I think the people of Cuba are wonderful. 
Uh, the shopping is great. The prices are very good. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't have any hesitation about going to Cuba, which if you'd like to do that, um, Cruise Holidays of Vieira would be very glad to help you with that. Uh, our phone number is 866-291-1331, and that's a toll-free number for you. And our website is vieira.cruiseholidays.com. And on our website, we have all kinds of great things like our specials that we have going on right now. And uh, one of those specials, I, while I'm thinking about it, I'll just tell you about it, and that's the Edge inaugural. And the Edge is the brand new ship that Celebrity is being, is producing, and it's going to be coming out of Fort Lauderdale on her first seven day cruise on December 9th of this year, 2018. And we've got a group aboard that, and if you'd like to join us, uh, we'd love to have you. Now, to learn more about this and to learn more about the ship, just go to our webpage, Viera cruiseholidays.com and right in the front there you'll see edge inaugural click the button that says learn more and um, it'll give you all the pricing it allows you to actually register for the cruise right there online and more importantly there's two videos there that tell you all about the edge ship and uh, it's going to be a magnificent technological uh, feat and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it so we urge you to uh, to sign up and go with us on the Edge inaugural. That's December 9th through the 16th from Fort Lauderdale. If you're coming from here in Melbourne area, the Central Florida area, we're going to have bus transportation included from our offices uh, in, Sun, in the Sun Tree area. All right. Now, some other things that I read about this week that I thought was interesting is that the Department, uh, the Customs and Bureau Protection uh, Bureau, I don't know what they're calling it now. It used to be called TSA. It used to be now it's all been combined into. Uh, it used to be called Customs. It's all been put together now into one agency, and um, they have announced this week. Did you know that they are searching iPhones? Um, they're searching iPads when you come back into the United States, or uh, yeah, when you go through Customs, and they're actually taking your phones and looking at the files in your phones. Now, they, they made a change this week stating that they were now no longer going to look at the files physically on your phone, uh, or they would be looking, I'm sorry, they will be looking at the ones on your phone, but not the ones you have in the iCloud. So, uh, I don't know. I think uh, the ACLU, for once in my life, I'm going to agree with them. They filed a lawsuit. I think this is a huge invasion of privacy. I think someone should have to have a warrant before they can go looking at my personal files on my personal devices, such as tablets and smartphones. But be that as it may, uh, they, they searched 30,000 phones last year. Uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting in the article is they stated that you have to give them your passwords so that they can search things in your phone. But after you do that, the passwords will be destroyed. Now, how do you destroy a password? That's, that's what I want to know. I'm not quite sure what that was all about. So just be aware that you may be uh, your phone or your iPad or your tablet or your um, uh, whatever your devices can be searched when you're going through customs, so be aware of that. All right, Viking announced the name of their sixth ocean ship this week. It's going to be called the Jupiter, and the Jupiter will be coming out in February of 2019. She's going to be sailing to uh, initially Europe and the Mediterranean. Uh, they also announced that they're going to be uh, building four more ships for delivery in 2021, and that's going to take their ships up to uh, 10 ships. Right now, they currently have um, five ships on order. They have four that are actually sailing right now. So I thought we'd talk about five things that you'd need to know about the Viking uh, Ocean Cruises. Now, it's a separate cruise line. It's all under the Viking Omnibus Corporation. It's, it's separate from their river cruise, but it has a lot of the features of the river cruise. And the five unique things about Viking Ocean cruises. First of all, there are 930 passengers. Uh, it's best for grown-ups. Children are not allowed on this ship, so um, you they cater to 55 and year olders. Um, they sail to uh, all over the world: Bermuda, the Caribbean, Mediterranean, Northern Europe, New England, and Canada and South America. And uh, they are very destination-focused itineraries. And the other thing that uh, they they feature onboard lectures. Their ships are Scandinavian design, and they have some of the best food at sea. Number one unique thing is the design. 
Uh, Viking goes all in on Scandinavian simplicity with warm, blonde woods of juniper and ash, low-slung furniture, and made for Instagram statement pieces by big-name designers such as Frank Gehry and Mario Bellini. You may know who those people are. I don't. <laughs> uh, so the uh, ships are beautiful. At least I, now I have not sailed on Viking Ocean cruises. Probably the only cruise line I haven't sailed on. Uh, but we have heard stories about what how beautifully appointed the ships are and how they're, they're just modern, sleek, uh, very upscale. Number two unique thing about Viking Ocean cruises: every cabin is a balcony. Uh, the si and this is what's very interesting. The lowest, the smallest cabin in their balconies is 270 square feet. Now, just to compare that, the ocean-facing balcony on the Oasis class ships is 184 square feet. So uh, they are very, very much, uh, very large um, uh, cabins. Uh, that goes. They also have some suites. Uh, they have the Explorer suite is 757 square feet, but a lot of people have suites. So. Number two, every cabin is a balcony. Number three, almost everything is included. Uh, Viking has a policy called no nickel and diming philosophy. Uh, the things that are included in the cruise are unlimited Wi-Fi, alternate restaurants, yoga and Pilates classes. Most cruise lines do charge extra for that. Beer and house wine at dinner and one shore excursion per port call. Now, normally the shore excursion is that one that uh, you get on a bus and you go around town and you see all the sites. If you want to do something more adventurous and more costly, that's going to be additional, such as, you know, a 4 by 4 off-road or, um, I don't know, different things. You know how the excursions go. They, they can go up in quite a bit. But every port, you do get one excursion included. The number four thing that's uh, very unique about... Uh, or that most people find really great about Viking Ocean Cruises is the cuisine. Um, they have a Italian restaurant called Manfredo, Freddy's. Manfredi's. Um, this, the reviewer here says that they uh, like the beef tartare topped with a quail egg. Who couldn't like that? Um, they have a five-course tasting menu at the chef's table that rotates every three days. Now, by the way, that's included. Most of those tasting menus at the chef's table type um, uh, alternative restaurants on most cruise lines can charge up to $125. They have something called Erling Scandinavian Bistro. They have some unique dishes there called some uh, like reindeer meat stuffed ravioli floating in consomme, beetroot granita, whatever that is, lamb wrapped in cabbage, all paired with wines. Um, Kitchen is the only restaurant, it's the name of the restaurant, Kitchen, that charges a fee, and that's because the experience is part meal, part excursion. You go away with the uh, ship's dining uh, staff or restaurant staff, kitchen staff, and you buy ingredients for the evening's meal, and you actually help prepare the meal, and that's uh, the kitchen. Finally, the fifth unique thing about Viking Ocean Cruises are the pools. Um, the Two main pools. There are two main pools. One in the center of the ship that has the um, cantilevered, um, um, I'm sorry, that has the retractable roof over the top of the pool. So when you're in inclement weather or, or colder weather, you can still use the pool. And then on the back of the ship, they have an infinity pool, which cantilevers off the back of the ship. So those are the five unique things that you should know about Viking Ocean Cruises. Again, we are uh, Viking experts, and uh, we are uh, licensed and authorized to book Viking ocean cruises as well as Viking river cruises. Uh, cruise Holidays of the Era represents 26 different cruise lines, all of the major river cruise lines, and almost all of the land tour companies. And we would be glad to help you plan your next vacation. We are a boutique vacation planning store. Boutique means we're small, and that means we can give great attention to you and to your trip and great detail to your trip. And we provide a service level that you haven't seen in many, many years. I call it retro service because it goes back to a time when service was the norm. Uh, I don't think that occurs anymore. When you call us at 866-291-1331, a person answers the phone within three rings. You don't have to press buttons for uh, English or things like that. And uh, the person then will be able to help you plan your next cruise. So please give us a call. And also please visit our website. There's a tremendous amount of information there. 
the website name is viera.cruiseholidays.com. And there's not only travel magazines there, there's information about all of the major cruise lines. Uh, there's information about all the specials that we're featuring and the different escorted cruises that we're going to be going on at Cruise Holidays of uh, Vieira. Uh, here's another article I found in the news this week, and this is kind of interesting. There's a website out there called Sea Hub, and now this took some patience. Uh, you all have all heard of Instagram. I mean, a lot, I know a lot of you use it, but for some of you that if you're not aware of it, it's a website where you can go and post pictures. And one of the features of the Instagram uh, posting is that you can put something called a hashtag on there. And so that's where you put the pound sign and then you put a category. So you can put hashtag cruising, hashtag Caribbean, hashtag um, cruise food, those kinds of things. And uh, what this website did, which is called Sea Hub, is they analyzed 1.8 million, if you can believe that, 1.8 million Instagram photos and they did this they analyzed them so that they could try to get some insight on what people think about cruising what they think about uh, who, what are the most interesting cruise ships and destinations and things like that so I, can, I can't imagine going through 1.8 million pictures of someone's pictures of their vacation but okay here's what they found out by doing their study uh, destinations in the Caribbean are in the top spot as the most Instagram locations. That's probably because that's the those are the most de highly highly popular destinations in the world. We have the most cruise uh, visitors, passengers going to Caribbean destination, and um, right after the Caribbean was the Bahamas and Nassau, and that's because our three and our four day cruises go there, and that's where we have a lot of folks on those cruises. Uh, this is interesting. August was the most popular month for heading out to the high seas. And I think, um, I don't know why that is, but uh, that is, by the way, my favorite time to go to Alaska, if you're thinking about going up there, just as an aside. Uh, now here, this is, this is very helpful. The five most popular cruise lines, this is using Instagram posts. Um, Royal Caribbean at 634,000 posts. Second was Carnival with 134 or 500,000, so about 134,000 less posts than Royal Caribbean had. I thought this was a little surprising. Disney came in third place, and Princess came in fourth place. Now, Princess um, passengers are not the type that I would normally expect to be uh, Instagramming. And then more uh, fascinating to me was number five was Celebrity Cruises. Now, this is the what I'm reading to you is the five most popular cruises cruise lines based upon the number of Instagram posts that had a hashtag on it. What also uh, surprised me that there was no NCL, nor, no Norwegian cruise line in that list. So anyway, uh, the most popular cruise ships within those cruise lines, uh, no surprise here, Royal Caribbean, it was Harmony of the Seas, Oasis of the Seas, and the Lure of the Seas. For Carnival Cruise Lines, it was Carnival Vista, Carnival Breeze, and Carnival Glory. For Celebrity Cruise Lines, it was Celebrity Reflection, Celebrity Eclipse. Both those two are Solstice-class ships, which are beautiful ships, and I would imagine they would have people would be taking a lot of photos of, of those two ships. And two of my very favorite ships in the world, the Disney Dream and the Disney Fantasy. Uh, for Norwegian Cruise Lines, the Escape and the Epic were the most popular. For Princess, it was the Regal Princess and the Royal Princess, which is the two of their newest cruise lines. So, just an aside there, uh, a little uh, kind of fun thing. That's the most popular uh, things that were viewed or posted on Instagram where people actually put uh, uh, hashtags in there when they, when they uh, posted their photo. Uh, one other cruise I want to tell you about that's coming up, and this is going to be next year. This is going to be in 2019, and it's going to be out of Port Canaveral. The Harmony Sea of the Seas is coming here, and uh, we have booked some group, group space on the ship uh, departing in May of 2019. There are going to be several cruises, and if you go to our website, you can get the information about these different cruises. The, starting on May 6th, there'll be a three-day cruise to Coco Key and Nassau. Then on May 9th, there's going to be another three-day cruise just going to Nassau. And then finally, there'll be a seven-day cruise going to the Eastern Caribbean, Coco Key, St. Thomas, and St. Martin. 
you can combine the May 9th cruise with the May 12th cruise. Now, this is all 2019 and uh, make a 10-day cruise out of it. And we've got all that pricing for you up on our webpage at vieira.cruiseholidays.com. That's the harmony of the seas. She's going to be moving from Fort Lauderdale to Port Canaveral. And uh, we can go ahead and make reservations for you. We have a, a fairly large group that's going to be going aboard that. And Linda and I will be escorting that in May of 2019. All right, let's uh, talk about river cruising. And let's talk about some new things that are going to be happening in 2018 uh, on the rivers of the world. Uh, starting with the Nile River, which is one of my favorite places in the world to cruise. If you haven't done this, you really need to do this. Put this on your bucket list. It's a fantastic experience. Uh, I tell people, you know, in the United States, when we go traveling and we go look at history, if we see something that's 300 years old, we're really impressed. That's really old, right? And then we go to Europe and then we go touring around and we see castles and cathedrals that are 1,000, 1,100 years old, back to the you know, 1400s, 1100s, that sort of thing. We're really impressed. When you go to Egypt, you're going to see things that are 5,000 years old. And uh, it is just a magnificent experience. Uh, the, the dry weather there keeps everything well uh, preserved, and it, I tell you, it's an experience not to be missed. Viking River Cruises is going to be returning to the Nile this year, and they're going to, they have just uh, refurbished a modern ship called the Ra, R-A, uh, and it's going to be 48 passengers. Wow, is that going to be spectacular? 48 passengers. Uh, it's going to, they're going to be cruising a 12-day Pharaohs and Pyramids itinerary that begins in Cairo, with a three-night stay at the Ritz-Carlton. Wow, <laughs> I love Ritz-Carlton's. Uh, it's the Nile, Ritz-Carlton, Cairo. I've seen it. It's right, absolutely, it's on a little island right in the uh, uh, Nile River. Uh, there they're going to be doing uh, tours to the Pyramids of Giza, uh, the Mosque of Muhammad Ali. It's not the fighter, it's a different one. And there's going to be a new Grand Egyptian Museum to replace the Cairo Museum, uh, which... Uh, if this museum, if you do nothing else in Europe, uh, I mean, the pyramids are phenomenal, but it has the complete King Tutankhamun collection. And now, I know there was a touring collection a few years ago, but when you see that entire collection, it is, mag oh, man, it is magnificent. Um, then they're going, to, after three days in Cairo, you're going to be taking a flight down to Luxor and boarding the, the ship there, the Viking Ra, for an eight-day round trip. Uh, cruise out of Luxor going to Edfu, Akina, Esna, and Aswan. Uh, all of those places have magnificent temples that you will not believe. Uh, wow, it's just a magnificent cruise. Um, and oh, they're also going to include a Nubian evening event and a camel ride. Well, everybody does a camel ride at the, at the pyramids. Uh, the Raz, uh, Viking Raz, R A. Uh, ship is going to have 290 foot, 91 square foot uh, cabins. The veranda suites are going to, re are going to uh, feature a full-size balcony off the living room along with a French balcony off the bedroom. Uh, very similar to the size and staterooms that we used on, uh, that we had on Ama when we went on the Mekong River year before last. Uh, Viking is also offering a three-night pre-crew stay in Jerusalem or and a four-night post-cruise stay in Jordan. So, uh, wow, you could really make this a bucket list cruise going, um, staying three days in Jer Jerusalem, going over to Cairo, spending 11 days touring Egypt, and then finally coming back and spending four days in Jordan. Wow. <laughs> uh, so if you would like information about this, and this is Viking River Cruises in Egypt or any of the other river cruises I'm going to be talking about, please give us a call at Cruise Holidays of Vieira uh, at 866-291-1331. Okay, Ama Waterways is going to have a new ship this year. It's going to be the 158-passenger Ama Lea. Uh, it's going to have 78 staterooms and four suites. Um, the main dining room is going to uh, have locally inspired cuisine, which is paired with unlimited wine and beer at lunch and dinner. This is Ama Waterways. Uh, they also have on all of their boats the chef's table. Uh, we were able to eat at the chef's table on uh, when we went to uh, Vietnam with Ama. 
and the Amalea will start off with a tulip time cruise. Now, if you've never taken these, these are in very early April or late March. That's very cold, but that's when the tulips are there. So if you want to see the tulips, you've got to go. And that's out of Amsterdam, which is a round trip, seven day cruise out of Amsterdam. Then she's going to be re going down to the Danube River, uh, where she's going to be doing the Romantic da Danube from Vilshoven to Budapest. Um, and they will also include at an additional cost a three night pre cruise option at either Prague or Munich uh, for going on the Amalea. And Crystal River Cruises uh, is adding two more boats this year. They launched two last year. That was their first year of cruising on the rivers. This year they're going to be adding the Crystal Ravel and the Crystal Debussy, 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 the, the composer. Uh, and they will be joining their Rhine class ships, the Crystal Mailer and the Crystal Bach. As you can tell, all of the Crystal ships are named after composers. Uh, some of the things that uh, are unique about the Crystal River Cruises is there's butler service in every cabin, king-sized beds that face uh, panoramic balcony windows. Uh, they have walk-in closets, uh, etro robes and slippers, flat screen HD TVs. They give you a personal iPad to use in your stateroom and a Nespresso machine in every stateroom. So that's Crystal River Cruises. Uh, Crystal, they really do things well. Uh, the new ships will be um, going on the tulips and windmills voyages from Amsterdam, and then they're going to start doing a uh, voyages between Amsterdam and Basel, Switzerland. That's uh, Crystal River Cruises, plus they're going to other places. Uh, on the Mekong River, what's new for 2018, Avalon Waterways is going to be launching a 36-passenger boat. And this one's going to be really unique because it's going to have a, nap, a shallow draft, which is going to allow them to go from Ho Chi Minh City, from Saigon, all the way to Siem Reap. And uh, so it's going to, they won't have to take a motor coach or air for, for things like that. So uh, that's going to be very unique for them. Uh, great, great uh itinerary and I can't stress enough if you, if you haven't been to um, Vietnam and Cambodia put that on your bucket list too. These are all really bucket list items here from the pyramids all the way through the uh, 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 Mekong River in Cambodia. Uh, they're going to allow, they're going to have a three day uh, pre-cruise and hotel stay in Siem Reap so that you can go to Angkor and see the temples of Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom. Uh, and uh, that's so it's a 13 day itinerary for them with those uh, included. And finally, uh, on America's rivers, American Cruise Lines is offering is off, is going to begin offering their newest ship, which is called uh, uh, the American Song. Now, this is going to be a new type of American River ship, it's going to look more like the European River Cruises. Uh, all of the staterooms are going to have private balconies. There's going to be a four-story glass atrium, and then there'll be multiple ships, uh, lounges in there. Uh, complimentary Wi-Fi will be available. Also, uh, well, she'll be originally sailing New Orleans and Memphis itineraries on the Mississippi River, and then she'll be relocating in the spring of 2018 uh, I'm sorry, in the spring of 2019, she's going to go out northwest to do the Columbia Snake River uh, sailings out there. So we have that will give us several ships out in the Columbia River also. Uh, Uniworld is uh, featuring something new. for It is for people from 21 to 45 years of age. It is called U by Uniworld. Um, they are taking two of their boats, and they're going to be exclusively for this age group. Uh, the one of their boats, the River Ambassador, is going to be renamed the A, as in Alpha. It's been refurbished and reconfigured for a 120 passenger vessel, and it's going to be in the Rhine, Mine, and Danube. And their other boat, which used to be called the River Baroness, is now going to be called the B. All right, so that brings you up to speed on all the new things that are going on with river cruising. And if you, again, if you're going to be taking a river cruise, we would love to be able to assist you in planning that at Cruise Holidays of Vieira. And uh, we're accessible to you by phone, by email on our webpage. You can just click up in the right-hand corner there, and it'll send us an email.
Well, continuing on, let's uh, look at the Royal Caribbean alcohol package. Uh, a lot of folks are, this is pretty much the norm. If you uh, were listening to Just Cruising many years ago, you heard us predict that this was going to be probably the, the only way that people purchased drinks on board a, cr a cruise ship anymore. So we'll go over some of the frequently asked questions uh, about the Royal Caribbean alcohol package. Now, the reason we're doing this is because this is very typical of almost all of the cruise lines. Um, a few differences. For one, one, the Royal Caribbean drink package is truly unlimited. Um, some cruise lines will limit you to, say, 15, 20, 25 drinks. It's more than enough. But um, the Royal Caribbean is completely unlimited. There's no maximum at all. The only thing that comes close to being a limitation, and I think this is an interesting part of the package that you get with the uh, alcohol pack or the deluxe uh, refreshment package, they call it, Royal Caribbean does. You get a cup that's used for sodas, and it has a little chip in it. And the chip allows you to go to machines that they have all over the ship, and you can refill your cup that way. And also, you can go to any bar and just hand them the cup, and they'll refill it with their guns, their soda guns. But that chip in there keeps you from getting more than one drink every 10 to 15 minutes. So that way, you can't run up fill up your cup, go pour it in something else, come back and fill it up again. So uh, that's the only limitation as far as being unlimited. The gratuity is included with the package. Now, when you buy the package, you'll see sometimes it'll say $64 a day. And then when you get the bill uh, or you get the invoice to sign, or if you get, uh, you see it on your onboard account, you'll see another figure on top of that. Well, that's another 18% that's added to the cost and that covers the gratuities. Now, one thing to be careful or cautious of is that when you get when you buy a drink, you're going to get a slip, and it's going to have the amount on there, and then it's going to have a. It's also going to have the gratuity. The gratuity won't be on there because that's already built in, and then it's going to have another sl slot slot there that says gratuity. So don't add another tip because it's already in the drink uh, when you get it. Um, Royal Caribbean started in 2018 instituting a rule that they had when they originally brought out the beverage packages, and now it's back again, and that's if uh, both adults in the stateroom who are 21 years or older, if one buys the package, both have to buy the package. Now, they are now making an exception, uh, and we just found out about this, and it works. If you call them to buy the, the, uh, the beverage package, and one of the persons, one of the adults, because of health issues, um, whatever religious issues they don't drink at all, then you can tell Royal Caribbean they will sell you the alcoholic package for one person, but the second adult has to buy the refreshment package, which is basically the soda package. So that's a little bit of a change. Now, if you're in a cabin with children, let's say that you have four in the cabin and you have you know three, uh, the third and the fourth are children, they don't have to buy the alcohol package, obviously, but they do have to buy the refreshment package. So those are the limitations as far as that. Uh, another misconception is that you have to buy the beverage package on the first day of the cruise or before you get on board. That's not true. Um, you just have to have the package by the fourth day of the cruise. So you can buy it on the second or the third on a seven-day cruise. On a longer cruise, you can wait longer. Um, and I sometimes, if, if people are on the fence about whether they think it's going to be worthwhile, I tell them just go on board. Don't buy it the first day, see how much money you spend, and then figure out how much it's going to cost for the remainder of the cruise and see if it makes sense for you to purchase it for the rest of the cruise. So that's a way to do that. Now, the only disadvantage with that is that uh, if you buy it before the cruise, if you go to Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines .com, uh, if you go to the cruise planner, it's, it has the ability to buy the beverage package before you board. Sometimes they will give you a discount by buying it the, ahead of time. Also, they are now... Uh, making the, they're combining the alcohol package with Voom, that, which is their uh, Wi-Fi, and it's giving you a significant discount on both of those. So uh, you may consider buying it before you go. Can you upgrade the package? Uh, yes, you can. Um, there, they do have a, a higher a level of alcohol package, so that the brands, the call brands, it's not the call brands, it's a um, higher brand, so it may be, Something like you might get, uh, let's say, Tangeray or Gordon's for the gin, and you like uh, Bombay Sapphire or Hennessy, 
then that's going to be the deluxe the, or the higher premium package. And um, that works out. To, I believe it's roughly $10 per person per day for, to upgrade that package. You can do that. However, there is one caveat. If you received the beverage package as a uh, promotion from Royal Caribbean, you cannot upgrade it. Uh, the other question is they, the drink prices uh, on the menus, uh, or on the website it says that the, you can buy a cocktail up to $12 per drink, but uh, on the Oasis and the Quantum class ships, the drinks cost $13. But what they have done now is they, the alcohol packages for the Quantum and the uh, Oasis class ships have been upgraded, so they now cover up to $13. All right, and uh, the qu other questions: Can I use it as soon? Can I use my beverage package as soon as I board the ship and upon disembarkation? Yes, except on disembarkation that morning, there's no bars open, so I don't know. Uh, I guess you could get something in the dining room for breakfast. You could get a mimosa or things like that. So um, I have a very funny story about the beverage package on, and this happened on Royal Caribbean. We went down to breakfast one morning. And I ordered a mimosa, and so she took my card, and she said, oh, the mimosa is not, um, it's too expensive. It's not included in the beverage package. I said, hmm, okay. I said, tell you what, uh, is champagne included? And she said, oh, yeah, you can have a glass of champagne. I said, okay, bring me a glass of champagne and a glass of orange juice. And she kind of looked at me and smiled and said, okay. And I said, well, what's the difference? So uh, that's my little mimosa story about the beverage package. Uh, it's a very good bargain. Again, you want to check it out for yourself, depending on your drinking habits, to see if it makes sense for you. All right, one more story before we leave you this week. And also, I do want to remind you that you can subscribe to our Just Cruising YouTube channel. Just click that red button you see there that says subscribe. When you do, be sure you click the little telephone bell that's there, because that's going to uh, provide you an update when we post the uh, Just Cruising the new uh, episode comes out. We try to get them out on uh, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, but it's nice to have that, and we'll send you an email when it comes out. So if you we appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and then click the notification button there. I just wanted to talk about tipping very quickly. Um, the, this article says the nature of the word tip dates back to the 1600s and means, quote, to give or to share. And there's no wise tale that says tipping means to ensure promptness. That's not true. Okay, because I don't think it cut started with English anyway. Uh, although a tip will include, will probably ensure promptness. Uh, just some different situations and what I recommend you do for different uh, tipping situations. Uh, the airports, especially if you're doing the long-term parking like over in Orlando and you take the little shuttle bus uh, and the fellow loads your, your luggage for you and then unloads it when you get to the airport. Uh, I usually give those guys about two dollars to three dollars per bag. Uh, we tend to travel with some pretty heavy bags, so <laughs> I, I feel sorry for them. Uh, when you get to the airport, if you use the sky cap, if you check in at curbside, uh, normally you want to give those guys four to five dollars per bag uh, for two of you. Hotels, uh, taxi cab drivers. I always give taxi cab drivers uh, about ten to fifteen percent tip. The same goes for limousine drivers uh, and for uh, when you're doing your transfers on the cruise lines, usually those guys I give two to three dollars uh, if you're in a large bus type thing because they do unload your luggage for you. And uh, now when you get to the hotel, the bellhop brings your luggage up to the room and I usually give those guys about five dollars a bag. Uh, the concierge, now this is one I have difficulties with. Um, their suggestion, the, the, the online, the suggestion is doing just a regular dinner reservation. You know, you go down, hey, what's a good restaurant? He says, you go here and, and I'll call and make reservations for you and he gets you the cab. Usually about 5 to $10. Now, if you're doing something really out of the ordinary with the concierge, you know, like you want to get tickets to Hamilton or something that's in New York City that's hard to do or you want to go to a special club or you want to be in the front row, then you might want to consider tipping those fellows between $30 and $50 if you do something, or ladies if you do something like that. Uh, we suggest you leave your maid in a hotel $2 to $5 per day. We usually err on the side of around the $2 per day uh, for the maid. Put it in an envelope and mark it for her or him and uh, put it on the nightstand. Tipping on cruises. As you all know, uh, all of now our cruise lines all include 
gratuities on your onboard account, or you can prepay them before you get on the ship. They run from approximately thirteen fifty per person per day up to about fifteen. Well, well, about seventeen fifty, depending on what type of cabin you have. For most cabins, it's uh, running right now at fourteen fifty per day per person. And those gratuities go for everybody on the ship, even people you don't see, like the laundry staff. Um, it covers your waiters, your sommeliers, your head waiters, all of those things, and your room steward. Um, we suggest on room service that uh, we normally keep a, a drawer with $1 bills in it, and we tip those folks about a dollar each time we use room service. And uh, now don't forget your luxury cruise lines, your six stars like Regent, uh, Seven Seas, Seaborn, Silver Sea, and those fellows, they all include the gratuities and they actually have a no tipping policy. We also will tip our room steward and our waiters if they've done a really good job, we'll give them an extra amount on the last day of the cruise, usually that's about another. Um, we do for the assistant waiter roughly $30 and the head waiter $50. Again, it depends on what kind of service we got. For the room steward, uh, depending on the length of the cruise, let's say for a seven-day cruise, normally about fifty or sixty dollars. Uh, and most of them don't have assistance anymore. Most of the time, it's just one. Uh, on tours, we generally, if it's depending on the length of the tour, if it's a two or three-hour tour, and they did a good job. Again, all of this, all my tipping advice to you is based upon people doing a good job, not just automatic tips. For the tour guides, if they did a good job on a two to three hour crew, uh, tour, we typically uh, tip about $5 per person. If it's a longer tour, maybe five, six hours, about $10 per person. And this is excursion tours. Uh, for land tours, it's a totally different thing. And the land tour company will give you the guidelines for tipping your tour guides when you're doing a Colette or a Tauk or a Globus or those kinds of tours. Um, for the bus driver, uh, again, I ask the, um, the uh, tour guide if they're taking care of the bus driver. If they don't, then I give the tour bus driver about another $2. Again, this is for gratuities. One thing to watch out, now you gotta be careful in the country that you're in which you're traveling uh, has different tipping customs. For instance, in China and, and Japan, it's totally forbidden and it's considered an insult. Uh, the English don't tip anybody. Uh, and most of the European countries, the tips are added, uh, especially for meals and drinks, are added into the bill. So you don't want to then leave something on top of that. Well, unless you, you feel like it, but uh, just know that the gratuities are already included. So that's just a little uh, tipping 101, just a little quick and dirty uh, tips on tips from us. And we hope you've enjoyed that. Well, this brings us to the end of this week's episode of Just Cruising. Thank you so much for being with us. And we hope you'll come back and visit with us again next week. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel. We hope you'll visit our website, viera.cruiseholidays.com, and we hope you'll call us at 866-291-1331. Until we see you again, keep on cruising. Jackson of Just Cruising. Hope you're enjoying Just Cruising here on YouTube. If you'd like to keep up to date on all the videos that we'll be producing here in the uh, in the near future, all you have to do is click the subscribe button just below my picture here, or you can click right over here for a list of the latest videos. Either way, we look forward to seeing you again. Until we do, keep on cruising.